Right. Good afternoon and welcome to the third and final MASD Awareness Day webinar supported by the Harm Free Care Network and Medline. This session is being recorded. Uh, we are uh, today we're delighted to have two speakers, um, Julie Tyra, TVN nurse consultant at Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital and Katie, lead nurse for Fundamentals Care um, in older people at Hampshire Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. As you will remember from our first MSD Awareness Day in 2022, it was largely inspired by Julie's local quality improvement initiative, Minimise Moisture. Julie, uh, today Julie is going to um, lead the session on Minimise Moisture, but Katie is going to offer some valuable perspectives on how teams in her trust have been using the initiative to develop their own protocols to imp improve prevention and management of moisture associated skin damage. Everyone will be on mute throughout the session, so please put your question into the Q&A panel at the top of your screen as we go and we'll try and answer them at the end. OK, right, Julia, I'm just going to put you on the screen. Right, there we go. Over to you. Thanks, Simon. Uh, first thing to say is thank you for uh, those of you who are joining live uh, because as a clinician, I know how difficult it is to do that. Uh, I joined the webinar last week. Uh, there was Jackie Fletcher and Professor David Fiogli uh, did the first two webinars last week. Um, and I was in the middle of a ward and then looked at the time, run back. Uh, so I was I was logging on about 12, five past 12, which is something you might do. Uh, if you're not watching this live, then hopefully you've managed to, uh, well, you have been successful in watching the recording. Uh, and if uh, if you're joining this live and, and you want the recordings of the first two webinars, then we'll give you those details of how you can get those as well. Uh, we really enjoyed the first two. Jackie Fletcher talked about uh, the different types of moisture associated skin damage and the international best practice recommendations. So what, what are we meant to be doing about what's the evidence base for some of the actions to prevent it? And then David Fiogli talked about uh, a particular type of moisture damage, uh, intertriginous dermatitis or intertrigo, and again, some of the, the actions that we can take uh, to prevent it. So the two main parts to, to, my, uh, to my piece is a, a talk about minimised moisture, which is our local initiative here, uh, and then a bit about the, the National Moisture Associated Skin Damage Awareness uh, days, uh, the first one last year and the second one in a couple of days time. So as we're talking, uh, myself and Katie, uh, it really kind of as a, a running theme that that we'd say, what could you do? And, and we're all at different points in, in tackling moisture associated skin damage. I think it's increasingly becoming a bit more uh, talked about. There's more about it in the nursing press. And we've expected over the last couple of years that at some point that the, there's going to be a heavier national focus on it uh, and some national drivers uh, for for organizations to to start collating their instance of moisture damage uh, and looking at quality improvement strategies about how we can reduce it so just think about what could you do as well a very quick reminder, just a couple of slides on what moisture associated skin damage is. It's an umbrella term and it covers that whole range of, of, of skin uh, damage caused by repeated or prolonged moisture on the skin. And the four types are incontinence associated dermatitis and intertriginous dermatitis. They're considered to be the two most prevalent. So IAD, skin damage caused by urine and faeces, and intertriginous dermatitis is where you've got usually perspiration, excess moisture between two surfaces of skin which are in contact with one another. And then the last two, but still two uh, types of skin damage are peri wound and peristoma. Now you may work in an organisation where actually you see a lot of, of stomas and that, that might be a particular type of skin damage that your organisation would focus on. If you run um, wound clinics, Peri wound moisture associated uh, dermatitis might be an area that you want to focus on. Uh, but for many organisations, care settings, uh, care home settings, community based care, and acute sectors, certainly the top two uh, are our most prevalent. And then I talked a couple of minutes ago about national drivers, and this was this is really the only documented one so far. 
uh, from NHS Improvement in June 2018 as part of their document, Pressure Ulcers Revised Definition of Measurement. A number of recommendations and one of them focused on wish associated skin damage. So it's the first time it's been given the, the nod from a national document and it was asking organisations to, to start start capturing the skin damage that's, that's caused by moisture. Uh, some organisations might be capturing it very well, others might be capturing some of it. Um, so this was saying try and be consistent in the way that you approach to, to try and record um, the patients who are developing this type of skin damage. And then it's an encouragement really to, to start looking at some quality improvement actions. So for us, our quality improvement initiative, initiative was was minimise moisture. So what, what is or was minimise moisture? It feels like it was only something that we introduced a couple of years ago, but I think it's four years, uh, but we still we still utilise this. We still make reference to it and um, it's, it continues to be a vehicle from which we can introduce uh, more more changes and, and practice. So it was a local campaign for us uh, here at Liverpool Heart and Chest and what we wanted to achieve was, was was really initially just more awareness around it and a bit more uh, awareness for staff so that they could help us support some some improvements. What we wanted to do was achieve more consistent practice because we were seeing different practices on different wards and different areas. The ultimate aim was to reduce uh, the number of patients who were developing moisture associated skin damage. So this was an initial campaign, as I say, maybe four years ago, but what it allowed us to develop at the same time was a system where we could monitor and review that uh, in a continuous kind of way moving forward. So over time, we've developed a, a new clinical pathway for moisture associated skin damage, which shows the four types and then the four uh, kind of actions or protocols to try and prevent or manage that those types of skin damage. We've changed our documentation to support best practice so for nurse and staff to complete in a similar way to, to, to a care plan for pressure also prevention. We've got a care plan or we call it a flow sheet in our electronic patient record to identify patients who are at risk of developing it and then putting in a, a prevention or treatment plan. And with the support of Medline, we developed a, a patient information leaflet, and that's a generic information leaflet that any organisation could, could utilise uh, if you haven't already got one of your own. So we found lots of advantages of doing this local campaign. Uh, it raised the profile massively. It got people talking about it, not least because one of my colleagues uh, dressed dressed up as our little character. I've got a photo coming in a sec. Uh, but it, it just gave us a, a platform to engage with staff and patients uh, so that their knowledge improved and their skills improved in how they could try and prevent this skin damage. It's a, it's a skin damage that patients will describe as painful, burning, uh, stinging and often embarrassing as well so to help kind of educate patients and, and educate staff and get their buy-in to support some of those improvements in practice uh, was was definitely something that was going to hit lots of agendas for the trust so it sits in quality it sits in patient safety and it sits in patient experience as well because their experience of coming into hospital um, sometimes with this condition already sometimes they develop it in hospital um, and it is a particularly embarrassing condition affecting often intimate uh, parts of the body. Um, we found that right across the board, it was it was appealing to a lot of different stakeholders in our organisation for different reasons. Um, and the final advantage is that ultimately we, you know, we, we've seen a reduced incidence. We've seen improved patient outcomes. It's something we see peaks and troughs in our in our numbers. Um, in hot weather, we get more into trigo, and maybe you'd expect that. Uh, but at different points, for for lots of different reasons, uh, we see peaks and troughs. But we monitor that, and where we're seeing the the the, the peaks, we try and step up a little bit and, and do a little bit more awareness. So, what does minimise stand for? Uh, I, we never reinvent the wheel. No one ever has to reinvent the wheel because someone's already done the hard work for us. So there's lots of sources of, of the evidence base. And I've already made reference to Jackie Fletcher's talk. Uh, she 
was one of the authors actually in the Interna International Best Practice Recommendations, which is a publication in Wounds International. And I've got the, the link to that reference uh, on the next slide. So I was reading that document and was just jotting down all the what all the key points, all the key recommendations. And um, the first letter of all of those key recommendations fell into into this word short of one letter. So I kind of repeated one letter, um, but minimize is uh, the acronym and it's also the intent. So we're trying to minimize the risk of patients developing um, MASD. And this is what it stands for. So the first one is management of incontinence. So that can be looking for the reasons why the person's incontinent uh, and also how we're going to manage the, the external effects of that. So making the right choices is the earliest opportunity is choices of, of products and, and resources and aids to, to try and manage that incontinence, be it urinary, fecal or both. The first I is inspect the skin. There's lots of overlap in pressure ulcer prevention and MASD prevention. Um, skin inspection is important to prevent really uh, any skin damage, regardless of the etiology or cause. Uh, but it's close skin inspection, and, and in in terms of MASD, it's checking all the all the anatomy uh, anatomical areas that can be affected by your feces, sweat wound fluid, peristomal fluid. So there's quite a lot of nooks and crannies uh, on the body that, that do need to be checked. Uh, that are potentially at risk of developing. Nutrition is always important in maintaining the, the barrier function uh, of the skin. The next I is uh, implementing a plan. So sometimes uh, our staff are very good at recognising the patients who are at risk of developing moisture damage. That part of our care plan and flow sheets filled in. But the next step is then putting something in place before the skin even shows a, a mark, any redness. It's about putting that plan in place to prevent it from happening and not being reactive to treat it, but more, rather that focus on prevention. And then M, obviously the, the, the similarity with pressure ulcers, but for a different reason, uh, is more moves. So more repositioning, change the position and um, walking or assisted repositioning. To reduce MASD, it's about that evaporation of moisture um, and cooling of the skin so that you've not got the moisture build up um, and that that's often kind of between the skin and the surface, wherever the surface the, the patient is sitting on or lying on. And then the third eye is to identify what you're looking at, so identify um, moisture damage for what it is um, and also the, the type of moisture damage, but there's often lots of, um, and this, this still is, and there will always be, lots of tricky uh, presentations where is it pressure, is it moisture, is it both, is it something else? So understanding the differences between pressure and moisture damage so that we can identify moisture associated skin damage uh, correctly and then put the right plan in place because moisture, pressure and other skin damage all require um, slightly different uh, treatments so it's important that we do and there's lots of resources uh, available to to help understand the differences between uh, these different etiologies. Skincare, uh, a lot of people will kind of say this is really a primary action in in helping to prevent MISD uh, and that's what you're going to uh, clean the skin with uh, and barrier products uh, in the form of cream sprays uh, or advanced skin protectants. And then finally, E, which is very important, is to educate the staff you work with um, and also the patients who you, you're caring for about the actions that they can take to reduce the risk of MSD. So we consider these as a um, like a skin bundle, even though this doesn't form our, our, the structure of our flow sheet or care plan. As I say, it's something that we make reference to often as, you know, consider these you know, run through this the, this list, are we, are we doing everything? Is everything captured in our uh, plan of care uh, to help minimise moisture? There's the references to the International Best Practice Recommendation um, and uh, an article that gives more detail about the global campaign that we did here. So the first 
National Moisture Association Skin Day was held last year. So this was something that we've uh, worked collaboratively with Medline and the Harvey Care Network in trying to put together um, some uh, resources and, and support so that different organisations can come together on the same day and all try and promote uh, moisture associated skin damage and prevention and management um, in some way, no matter how big or small. Uh, so this was what we did last year on the, on the first National Awareness Day. We chose the third Thursday in March and we've replicated that this year, the third Thursday in March to kind of, you know, coincide with the, the Stop the Pressure Day, uh, which follows on the third Thursday in November. Um, there's lots of awareness days though this week, there's nutritional and there's some other national ones. So we did think if we chose right there, but um, we can always make MASD day uh, something good. Doesn't matter if there's other awareness days going on at the same time. So we uh, developed a, a, a logo uh, that's this kind of yellow drop of moisture that's meant to replicate a drop of moisture, be it your and liquid feces perspiration. Uh, and my colleague Sammy in the middle there dressed up as our, our logo. Uh, all credit to him when we made the costume. And Leeds uh, Teaching Hospital got involved. Uh, different organisations do different things. So uh, visiting the clinical areas or having a, a stand somewhere where lots of staff pass through, uh, T-shirts, freebies to give out to staff. Uh, Warrington and Holt Hospitals had uh, these uh, T-shirts made and I know they visited all the uh, clinical areas on the day to try and promote. Some of the stands out, it catches the staff's attention, um, gets them talking about why you're dressed like that, what are you doing? Uh, Bridgewater Community, um, so that photo there's shown some of the resources that uh, are available online that you can use, uh, lots of posters, lots of information to give to staff. Uh, so anything big or small really uh, on the day uh, is, is is useful so something's always better than nothing and these are these type of awareness days uh, work by each year getting a bit more exposure uh, as more people hear about it or recognize it or see it on social media or or really kind of uh, start looking at what other people have done and, and taking a bit of uh, inspiration from that uh, or some new ideas. Uh, as I say, we, we never need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, there's always bits and pieces we can we can take and use in our own organisation to benefit the staff and uh, patients. So we're hoping that this year um, we've got a bit more a bit more awareness of the awareness day with other organisations and we hope that more will join in and participate. It's not long to go, it's only on Thursday. Um, we're not completely ready yet but I'm going to have to factor in a little bit of time today and tomorrow uh, to get our resources all printed and ready so that we've got stuff to give to give out. And as I say, it doesn't matter big or small, even if organisations just put something on a corporate communication or a bulletin uh, or send an email to all the ward managers um, or, or visited one or two of the of the areas where they know that the patients are at high risk of getting moisture associated skin damage. Every, don't mean to take a supermarket's phrase, but every little does help. You know, we're chipping away at this. Uh, some organisations, it's a relatively new topic. Uh, so anything that we can do uh, is going to be helpful. So if you've not already uh, registered or if you know of other organisations who you could kind of spread the word, that would be uh, fabulous. Uh, if you do register, if you just type in Medline MASD or this link, um, it'll take you to uh, the, the web page and there's there's loads of resources there. So there's posters, there's the information leaflet, there's articles, blogs, um, quizzes, word searches, like things that you can do to, to kind of engage your staff as well. Um, there's a full uh, digital campaign campaign kit so it, it is worth a look um, and hopefully you'll be able to join us on the Thursday for five minutes or five hours wherever you've got I know it's I know it's tricky to fit in um, to fit this type of kind of activity in um, the other the only other thing I would say before I pass to Katie is that getting involved in um, 
these type of awareness campaigns is very useful not only to raise the awareness for the topic in which you're doing, be it pressure or moisture, but it also will help to raise the profile of your uh, service and your team. And in doing so, kind of builds kind of stronger connections with key stakeholders in your organisation um, who will be willing then, more willing, to support you with your quality improvement uh, agenda as well. So lots of benefits. So have a think about what you could do, or you might have something planned, which is brilliant. Um, if you do, then we are urging kind of everybody to to use those uh, hashtags there, just so that we can all link in and, and see what everyone's doing. Because uh, it is really good to see. It was really good to see last year everyone doing different things. Um, as I say, no matter how big or small, um, have a think what you could do. I'm going to stop sharing my uh, screen so that Simon can share Katie uh, from Hampshire. Katie, the reason why Simon didn't introduce you is that you can't pronounce your surname, so you'll have to introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I, can't can't it. It. I, I can't say it either, so don't worry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're better than us. So I'll let me put Katie on the screen. Uh, right, so we are. Right. Right, Katie, if you just share your slides and then I can put them on the screen as well and then. Uh, there we go. Can we see that? Yeah, um, so hang on, so why is that? Not doing that. OK, um, hang on, let me just go to there and then there. And then that one goes like that. And send live. OK. Katie, over to you. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thanks for inviting me. So I'm Katie. Uh, I'll just let you all know what my surname is. It's Mashing Guys, eh? Um, I'm lead nurse for fundamentals of care in the older adult at Hampshire Hospitals. My background isn't tissue viability. Um, I'm actually a continence um falls and sort of deconditioning rehab of older adults so um i'm gonna we're gonna or well, i say we because everything we do is a team where i work um gonna share our story and how we've come together to kind of raise the awareness of moisture at hampshire hospitals so a little bit about us um we are a team of 12 um, nurses and practitioners. We are all very, very passionate about patient care, reducing harm and promoting safety across the trust. Um, and we really believe in good old fashioned going back to basic nursing care. Within the team, like I say, we are an umbrella. So we've got tissue viability, um, falls prevention, nutrition, nail and foot hygiene and health, continence, um, deconditioning, and together we've kind of forged the fundamentals of care team now we've been highly invested in by key stakeholders um, and we're really raising the profile of, of anything that can put a patient at risk or, or bring them to harm during their stay and hopefully improve outcomes on discharge as well. So like I said as a team we really really believe that um, an incident whether it's a pressure ulcer or a fall or in this case moisture associated skin damage is really the end product and so our ethos is very much um, based on stripping things back and treating the cause, not just what you see in front of you. In the case of uh, moisture damage, whilst we firmly believe in promoting the role and knowledge of everyone that we're working with on the wards, because it should be a ward based skill, um, we also want to make sure that everything can be done to optimise our patients and that their skin can heal and any further damage can be prevented. One of the ways we're doing this is through um, an introduction of what we're calling a holistic huddle. And if a patient gets referred to our services um, for moisture damage, um, we will discuss them as a team and then we will decide who are the right team members to go in and kind of optimise the patient. Um, and that might be a review of things like continence, which is really important. Um, it could be their mobility level, their nutritional status, obviously their skin status. So our tissue viability nurse or our wound care nurse will go in. Um, and basically what we do is use that kind of MDT approach to, to resolve everything 
rather than just sort of masking the problem because it doesn't really solve it. So what we're trying to do is actually get to the, the root of, of what's going on. To ensure all our staff are really absorbing the learning and the key messages that we're trying to communicate, we've actually now added moisture um, damage to a slot on our corporate induction. So it, it gets its own little slot. Um, and we give that to healthcare support workers as well, because actually we know that they're the bread and butter of our shifts really, aren't they? They're out doing the care and often they're the first ones to, to notice something is, is changing. Um, these sessions are also sort of being widely kind of accessible at ward based level, but we're also looking at new ways of sort of spreading the word um, and letting people know what we do. So our fundamentals of care team now, um, every patient that comes in has a full continence assessment and then myself and Georgie would go out and do an advanced assessment, for example, with people that perhaps have got um, some urinary associated moisture damage or if it's to do with faecal loss. Um, and we're doing things like managing bowels, you know, reducing pad culture so that we're not as dependent on the use of pads and stuff. We might go and pop in a flexi seal or a collection bag um, and really just kind of look at it as more than just a, an incident that's affecting the skin. So we're trying to raise awareness of the messages we're doing everywhere that we go. Our team are known quite well across the hospital for having fun. So last year, like Julie was saying, um, we went out on our travels and because it is actually it falls in nicely to the International Safety Week, we did our what we call a safety march. Um, and so on Moisture Day, as we like to call it, and um, we took Joan out for a spin. She's actually our admin manager and we like to dress her up um, and do all things fun with her. So we took her out around the wards. We were getting staff to identify perhaps where moisture can occur, the type of moisture, what we would refer to it as. Um, how we might treat it or approach it or who we might refer to help resolve it. And then this year we're going to take Jeff out for a spin. So obviously we like to keep things fresh in our hospital. So we're going to be doing a little bit of um, pin the moisture on the mannequin this year. We've also got a station set out in the trusts because we've got three different sites. So people will be able to come and have a play, have a chat, measure for incontinence pads as well. So actually, if you get the right fit, you can reduce um, the contact to the skin where it can increase the risk of, of damage. Um, we've got a new pathway that is coming out. So it's our moisture, we're just calling it a moisture damage pathway. And again, that's just in simple, simple language that everyone can understand from sort of healthcare support workers through to OTs and physios and just what to do, how to treat it, what the next steps might be. Um, and really, we just want to, like Julie said, is raise the profile of it because it does lead to further damage. It is uncomfortable. It isn't dignified. You know, there's so much more that we can do to raise awareness. And what we found is that when we're doing all of this and we're coming together more holistically rather than specialist teams sort of doing their thing, um, we found that really good things are happening. So I just want to finish my little bit with a patient story. I'm going to introduce you to Mr X. He was actually referred to the tissue viability team. Um, and sadly, he'd had quite a long sit um, and it was over three weeks. So he had quite a sustained level of pressure ulcer, um, moisture damage, deep tissue injuries, that type of thing. Rather than treat Mr X's wounds and skin damage, we came together as a holistic team, like I said, um, and we decided which specialties were needed to support his recovery. And so for the duration of his stay, you know, we really worked together to kind of get him back on his feet and hopefully have a really good positive outcome. We cared for his skin first and foremost because that was priority and then we looked at really what was the root, root cause of, of how we would got to this point. And, you know, it was from that point on we realised that it was foot hygiene. Um, so he'd had really poor nail and foot care in the past. This meant he couldn't get out to the toilet. He wasn't mobilising. Obviously, as he wasn't doing that, he was becoming weaker until one day he just kind of gave up. And for him, the option was to just sit and 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 just become incontinent. Um, the the damage to his skin was really extensive. You you could see sort of a, a full kind of pattern of where 
his soiled underwear was um and it was quite traumatic and he he was in a really poor state mentally you know and emotionally so we tried to give all of the intervention that we could um and not just focus on the skin to get him where he needed to go so i am really happy to say that actually it was this week as well mr mr x was discharged from the trust his skin you know what tissue viability nurses did for his skin was amazing um he's walking around he's comfortable he's continent which is you know the, the real game changer for him but he feels like a person again and i think it just kind of um highlights what Julie was saying you know to minimize moisture you have to think about more than just the skin there's so much going on and if we hadn't have provided that intervention you know the the initial kind of thoughts on on our patient was that he was probably going to need to go into nursing care at a nursing home um and he's gone home with a very very minimal support package of care now so Mr X is just one of the, the patients that we're seeing on a daily um, basis and you know I think it's fair to say that we really are getting more people to think about safety outcomes and reducing harm in everything that we do and for us it isn't um, it isn't a competition you know there's no aspect of patient care which is more important everything complements something else that someone's doing we were very keen on promoting that no service or intervention or specialist nurse is more important than anyone else. So we re remain very clinical. I go out on the wards in the week and I just go and wash patients, work with healthcare assistants. And we all do, you know, we like to teach on the job and show that it's all our role and we can all play our part. Um, and really, alongside the promoting of, of safety, it, it's about staff really recognising that actually basic nursing care is very far from basic because the things that we can achieve when we actually strip things back, you know, are amazing. And that's my lovely little team. There's me in the middle. Like I said, there's 12 of us and we, we all do different roles. Um, and thank you for just giving me some of your time. Thanks, Katie. That was really interesting, and and Julie, you know, looking back at the um, looking back at the uh, yeah, obviously what we did last year, and just getting everyone's sort of uh, give everyone some ideas of you know if you haven't yet finalised everything for Thursday, um, have uh, yeah, hopefully you can take some uh, uh, inspiration from um, from what Julie and Katie have have shared today. Um, Oh, right. oh yes, there we go. So I had asked if no one's got a question. I'm sure questions will come, but it's one of these things you need to get one or two people asking a question and then, then more will follow. Um, so we've had um, we've had a, uh, a comment from Goldie who is sharing what they're going to be doing on Thursday. We'll be having a competition where staff has to find the MSD posters to get a prize. We will also be doing our rounds on the day promoting the education, um, promoting and educating staff um, and other healthcare professionals around MASD Awareness Day. Um, so that is that is brilliant. I mean, one one question from from me uh, for you, Julie. Um, so you said about um, getting you know, staff are good at identifying risk early. You know, of MESD, which is which is brilliant. Um, you said so, so. What has sort of worked particularly well in getting them to then be more proactive in putting the plan together? You said sometimes they identify the risk early and then it still becomes quite reactive. Um, so, what would you say has sort of worked best? We've done one thing leads to another, doesn't it? So we've done another. Uh, we've just started this actually. Another uh, quality improvements initiative called Topical Time, because. You know, a, a key part of trying to prevent moisture damage. Well, that's what Katie said, an absolute focus on the cause, not the end result. Um, in the interim, where you try to identify the cause and you have got the end result though with the moisture on the skin, uh, skin care does become quite important. And what we find as, as tissue viability nurses, not just in the prevention of MESD, but in the application of any topical products, is that they're not given the same importance as oral medication or IV medication. So that's a battle in itself. Uh, we've looked at lots of different reasons why that is. Um, we've tried to um, prescribe and monitor to, to that and you know, lots of different things. Uh, so the initiative that we did was called Topical Time. So we've kind of got a pink tray at everyone's bedside with a, yeah. a checklist of topical products and, and how frequently to apply them as well, because 
we're not sure is it the the staff haven't got the understand the, the knowledge and the skills and the understanding of what products to use when and how often um and just having a pink tray so it's about something visual keeps it at the forefront of, every, of everyone's mind who's looking after the patient so would it very early days in doing that very early days in doing that but uh, we feed back a lot of information to staff so um not as not something to hit people over the head with but something something to actually big people up because a lot is, uh, of time is spent what people do badly rather than what people are doing well so actually you know to say you know so many more percentage of patients are, are now getting the, uh, the skincare as prevention rather than treatment so keeping that kind of continuous uh, monitoring of it uh, really helps but I keep saying every little helps I, I don't shop at Tesco's anymore but every little does help because it just keeps chipping away and um, when staff who are looking after patients have got that many things to think about um, a number of patients and that many different different things and lots of specialist uh, nurses all thinking that they're a bit you know more, more important than anything else um, they've got a, a lot going on so we're responsible for making their job as easy as it can be so as easy as it can be to get the hands on the right products and to use them at the earliest opportunity um, so lot, lots of different things uh, Simon but that's very exciting Goldie we found that also that offer people a prize and go crazy go crazy it's one way of getting people involved it works a bit of excitement yeah <laughs> um Goldie had another question actually um let me just publish that one um so she was asking is there any uh, way where we can minimise MASD to bariatric and lymphedema patients. Jackie touched on that on um, mm. in, a, in a talk on uh, last Tuesday, so it's worth looking at that record, getting that recorded, and, and listening to that as well. Mm. I think what Jackie did was uh, acknowledge how difficult it is actually to to reduce skin damage in in those really, really deep um, skin folds on bariatric patients and lymphedema patients uh, in particular as well. It is really, really hard. Uh, both here and David mentioned um, moisture wicking fabrics, which is uh, uh, not new, but potentially relatively new getting out here in this in, in the UK, um, which can sometimes help rather than patients they were describing kind of stuff and bits of gauze and tissue and lots of creases mm -hmm. so it's definitely acknowledged it's a huge challenge maybe the use of the moisture wicking uh, products is is one way to go if you've not kind of tried any of them that might be worth a try yeah i think as well in terms of bariatric patients we found a lot of a lot of hospitals, their formulary to manage continence is very limited as well. So you'll see patients and they'll have sort of two or three pads popped underneath them, for example, when they're incontinent. That doesn't change the absorbency of, of what is sat underneath them. It's just, you know, encouraging more moisture to build more than anything. So sometimes it's about looking at, at simple things like have you got good bariatric products available? Um, have we got good bariatric even you know um, bedpans it can make such a big difference because it actually just improves the integrity of the skin when they're when they're on this and getting people out of bed we do sort of tend to think that these patients are heavier patients but we have lots of equipment that can help us get them out of bed and, and go on to the loo as well and I think that's something that we've been focusing on to help as well yeah that's brilliant absolutely like fundamental to, to every group of patients it's it is kind of um good hygiene trying to keep the skin dry um obviously you using a, a skin protectant um and using the mdt as Katie said uh so you know physios ot's working together to get to get more movement more changes in position great no thank you both for that and um yeah i think everyone's uh maybe keeping their questions to themselves today so um i mean i think probably we will we'll wrap it up there unless anyone's got any final questions that they want to throw in before before we wrap up the session um but yeah i mean 
uh, Judy and Casey, thank you so much for today. Really interesting um, you know, hearing your perspectives on it and how to engage staff and patients in, um, in MASD and how to mitigate the risks and get a more proactive you know, treatments and plans in place uh, you know, quicker. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully um, today has been it's given everyone some you know, really good food for thought. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, if there are any questions that come to you afterwards, then by all means just um, just email us, and we will uh, pass the, um, we'll get answers from from Julie or Katie and and pass them back to you. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for your time. And we'll hopefully see lots, lots from you on uh, on Thursday for your MSD Awareness Days. Please get it on uh, Twitter, like Julie said, under the hashtag ThinkMASD and hashtag Minimise Moisture, and we'll promote all of your uh, all of your great all of your great work um, through the Harm Free Care Twitter. Um, so yes, uh, that's oh, hang on, there seems to, hang on, what, yeah. Final question. Um, so we've got uh, there seems to be an increase in instance of MASD over recent months. Why do you think this is happening now when we are following protocols? <laughs> there's always peaks, there's always peaks and troughs, and sometimes they can be rationalised, and sometimes we we can't. Uh, we noticed a peak, and a lot of organisations did actually in speaking in the region in November and December. Um, we've speculated, and it is just speculation. You know, there were some nursing strikes, there's staff shortages in different areas. <coughs> sure, the same in most organisations, isn't it? Um, it is speculative. Uh, best thing to do is to kind of look at the areas in which it's happening uh, to see if there's anything local kind of going on that, that you know, are aware of some things are beyond your influence of control, but other, you know, and, and just need like a nod like to acknowledge them. Um, it's a tricky one because sometimes you never find out why, why there's peaks and troughs. You find anything, Katie? No, I think we were probably the same, but I would imagine there was that little peak of flu. Um, Covid yeah. went up again and obviously like we say there's nothing that is more of a priority but I suppose when you've got staffing shortages like you said strikes staff poorly as well we, we are always limited aren't we we're only human that's it yeah okay um and yeah just one from Amy uh please could you share um Katie's fundamentals of care nurse email with me uh so is that all right Katie if you could uh um, yeah, if you can yeah. spell my name. <laughs> yeah, so she wants to network. Yeah, there we are. So yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll pass that over to you. Uh, perfect. OK, uh, I think that is, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it. So let's call that a wrap. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have a good rest of the day. And we look forward to seeing all of your activity on Thursday. Mm, Bye for now. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you.